Little baby told God Hey, I'm kind of scared Don't really know if I want to go down Here it looks like a little blue ball But that's a great big place And I'm so small Why can't I just stay here with you? Did I make you mad? Don't you want me to? And God said, oh child, of course I do. But there's somebody special that's waiting for you. So hush now, baby, and don't you cry. Cause there's someone down there away Whose only goal in life Is making sure you're always Gonna be alright A loving angel, tender, tough and strong Come on child, it's time To meet your mom She's talking to you Make sure you listen close Cause she's gonna teach you Everything you'll ever need to know Like how to mind your manners To love and laugh and dream And she'll put you on the path That'll bring you back So hush now, little baby, don't you cry Cause there's someone down there away Whose only goal in life Is making sure you're always gonna be alright A loving angel, tender, tough and strong Come on child, it's time Meet your mom. Morning. Oh, we're loud somewhere. There we go. Y'all didn't expect to have Garth Brooks here this morning, did you? You know, I have a <clears throat> compassionate heart. When I heard this song, I said, you know, I've, I've been saving this for about six months now, waiting on Mother's Day to get here, because it's so appropriate. We know that uh, a child is a gift from God. And today, we're truly thankful for mothers that are here with us. And we're thankful for those mothers who have passed on. But we're all here today because of a mother. Amen. Everyone needed a mother to be here today. Even Jesus had a mother. And of course today is Mother's Day as you all know. and It's a day to honor those women in our lives who made a difference in our lives. And each one of you probably have a different story or a different feeling about that, but maybe it was the woman who gave you birth. Maybe it was an aunt, a sister, or just some woman you knew that made that life change for the better for you. Could be any one of the ones there. Being a mother is a remarkable thing, but being a Christian mother is a wonderful thing. Proverbs 31. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Ladies, you know, guys, you're just going to have to work yourself through this one because today it's all about the ladies. It's all about the moms and the women. So hang in there with me and... Uh, Let's make sure that we show them the honor and the praise they deserve. You know, ladies, your feet stick to the kitchen floor. 
lots of times when you're raising your children and you don't care. You can't find your cell phone, so you ask your friend to call it for you. And you run around the house just following the sound until you find it in the laundry basket where you got busy and forgot. Your baby's pacifier falls on the floor and you give it back to the baby after you suck off the dirt because you're too busy to wash it. Spit is your number one cleaning agent. You can never go to the bathroom alone without someone screaming outside the door. You spend a half hour sometimes searching for your sunglasses only to have your teenager say, Mom, why don't you wear the ones you pushed up on your head? Moms get busy. One mother said the easiest part of being a mother is giving birth. The hardest part is showing up for it each day. I can believe that. You know, Mother's Day is traditionally a day when uh, children give something back to their mothers for all they've done for them. It's where dads take children to the stores and purchase what they want for their moms. And some of the gifts could vary from a basketball to who knows. But they're giving it because they love their mom. Philippians 4.13 says, I, Oh, I, I'm sorry, I messed up there. A Christian mother, as you know, if all this goes on in a Christian household with a mom, a Christian mother can handle all of this better than a man can. But a Christian mother can handle it for one reason and one scripture in the Bible, and that's Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I know moms would have to hang on to that pretty tight because the days can get tough, especially when you're raising those really young ones. There's a time when you don't have any peace to yourself, when it seems like the days are just going on forever. But a mother's love has much, much importance in the lives of children. Very much so. A mother's love is stronger than steel. Softer than down and more resilient than a mighty oak. A mother has to be truly dedicated to the task at hand. Her love closes all wounds, melts disappointments, and enables the weakest child to stand tall and straight in this world of adversity. One of the most powerful sights in this world is a mother who lets God's love flow through her to her child, blessing the world with the tenderness and touch and the joy she reflects. What a wonderful thing, a mother's love. You know, some moms have to provide that tough love. They have to be everything. They have to be the doctor, the nurse, the carpenter, the repairman. They have to wear so many different hats and do so many different things. Not saying the dads aren't important in this, but the mom is the one that they usually run to when they're sick or they're hurt. My mom, she was a wonderful mom in raising us, but she was tough. She never backed down from an argument or a fight. I think that's how we learn to stand up for ourselves. Sometimes your children can get a little rebellious at certain ages. I think I've told this story, but one time when I was very small, we lived out in the country in Mansfield. We had relatives over for the weekend and just their kids and everybody just having a good time. And it had been raining, probably not as bad as it is now. But it was kind of muddy outside, and we all wanted to go out and play. And we had this sidewalk that ran down right in front of our house. 
And my mom said, okay, y'all can all go out there and play. Don't get off that sidewalk and don't get in the mud. That was an invitation. First thing we did, start making mud pies. And you know, my mom, she got aggravated about that, and she lined everybody up and said, I'm going to give you all a spanking for playing in the mud after I told you not to get off that sidewalk. Well, when it came my time, I said, Mom, if you spank me, I'm going to smear mud all over your screen door. <laughs> Boy, I was a smart aleck little tight. Well, I got a spanking. And then I smeared mud on that screen door. And I got another spanking. <laughs> One of us had to give sooner or later, right? Well, she won. She won. So you see what moms have to deal with. But they have to issue that tough love. And my mom could issue some tough love. You know, many of us that are missing that today, my mom's already passed on, and many of you have. My dad's passed on. Some of you ladies today struggling with that. I remember the saying that came from Dale Hansen when finally his mother died. He said, now, since my dad's gone and my mom's gone, I feel like I'm nobody's child. Well, I want you to know, you are the child of God. Always. That never changes. So, I want to read you a story. Some of you may know who Irma Bombeck is. She is a famous newspaper article writer and a uh, writer of books and uh, several articles. And she had a really neat, uh, article that she wrote and I'd like to take a chance to read that for you today moms she's talking about tells how God was in the act of creating mothers and she says that on the day that God created mothers he had already worked long overtime and an angel said to him Lord you sure are spending a lot of time on this one the Lord, Lord turned and said have you read the specs on this model she is supposed to be completely washable, but not plastic. She is to have 180 moving parts, all of them replaceable. She is to have a kiss that will heal everything from a broken leg to a broken heart. She is to have a lap that will disappear when she stands up. She is to be able to function on black coffee and leftovers. And she is supposed to have six pairs of hands. Six pairs of hands, said the angel. That's impossible. It's not the six pairs of hands that bothers me, said the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes. She is supposed to have one pair that sees through closed doors so that whenever she says, what are you kids doing in there? She already knows what they're doing in there. She has another pair in the back of her head to see all things she is not supposed to see, but must see. And then she has one pair right in front that can look at a child that is just goofed and communicate love and understanding without saying a word. That's too much, said the angel. You can't put that much in one model. Why don't you rest for a while and resume your cre creating tomorrow? No, I can't, said the Lord. I'm close to creating someone very much like myself. I've already come up with a model who can heal herself when she is sick, who can feed a family of six with one pound of hamburger, and who can persuade a nine-year-old to take a shower? Then the angel looked at the model of motherhood a little more closely and said, she's too soft. Oh, but she is tough, said the Lord. You'd be surprised at how much this mother can do. Can she think? asked the angel. Not only can she think, she said, Lord, <clears throat> can she think, said the Lord, but she can reason and can promise and persuade. That's pretty clear about a mom. A mom needs to be able to do it all. And sometimes in that happening when they are, they seem like that no one notices. That all of it's in vain. But even through that, because of a mother's love, she continues. Mary was a good example. Mary watching her only son go through everything that he went through 
and then watch him to be nailed on a cross to cover everybody else's sins. It takes a special mom. And not only did it end there, Mary continued to encourage the disciples and the people that Jesus touched because of her love for her son and what he believed in, she also believed in. Mom's your support for your children. The way they're raised and the things you teach them are much more important than you would ever believe. A faithful mother actually does three things that help her children. A faithful mother lives her faith. Lives her faith. Living your faith is trusting and obeying God and that your children see that faith lived out daily. A faithful mother prays for her children. Praying for and with your children is a demonstration of your true love for your child and for God. And a faithful mother gives her children to God. Giving your children to God means that you acknowledge that your children are, are a gift from God and for the purpose of raising in a godly fashion with the godly values and the sense of God's calling. A mother is called to be a mother. It is a calling from God. As the child is a gift from God, moms, you weren't just enabled in this, you were called to be the mother you are. I know fathers help shape children, but mothers determine the path they go on. Mothers determine a lot of the teachings that children receive today. We see more and more in this world that we have single mom households where the mom's having to do it all. Mom, don't discredit yourself in any way. I know it's great to have a father in that relationship. But if you are a single mom, you have the gifts and you have the talents and the calling God has entrusted you with by allowing you to have a gift from Him. So don't take that advantage of that and don't take that in a way that you failed. Because I hear that all the time. I think I failed as a mom because my child is off doing this or my child is off doing that or my child's not really growing up the way that I thought he should be. But if you've instilled the purposes, the Word of God, and the direction, and you continue to pray for your children, then God will lead them in the way of the Lord. Moms, we thank you today for your tireless dedication in the many roles that you play in children's lives. We thank you for the love you provide during the good times and the love you provide during the bad. It's like God's unconditional love. Mothers love their children always. We thank you for that love that reflects the love of Jesus Christ. I would like to close with this today. With this piece of scripture from Proverbs. This is the King James Version. But it's repeated over and over again. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. How true. If you're not raising your child in a godly household, it's time for changes. It's time for you to seek God's word, God's will in the direction you'd have, a go, have, have your child go. There's no manual. They, there are numbers of books out there, how to be a mom books everywhere. But if you want the only book that can lead you in the direction that God would have your child grow up, then you need the Bible. Because it's all there. Today, we do baby dedications. We do them on Mother's Day each year. Baby, baby dedications are where you're saying, I'm choosing 
to raise my child in the ways of the Lord. And I'm dedicating this child back to you who presented this gift to me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you just continue to pour out on us and on your church house here. Father, we thank you for the mothers. Father, we thank you so much that they show that love. And Father God, that Jesus Christ is reflected through them in so many ways. We thank you for their just tireless effort to keep the family together. Keep the children on the path that you would have them go. And Father, today I know there are moms out there struggling. Struggling with their children. Struggling in life. But Father, I know you're the answer. And I pray today that each and every one of them would seek you. That they would seek your face. Read your word. And Father, ask for your will and what's going on in your life. Father, we pray that you put a hand upon them, that you would just wrap them up tight, pull them close. Father, and give them that comfort knowing that you're right there with them. Father, we just thank you so much that you loved all of us enough, Father, that you gave your Son to die on that cross that we would have that opportunity of eternal life. Father, we love you. We pray that everything we did today was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. If I could have my guys come forward, and if we'd have the children for their baby dedications all come forward.